Not all pregnancies uh, go entirely smoothly and intervention is required at various stages. Uh, if a woman, for example, is not going into labour and there may be a need for her to go into labour, then we may need to induce the labour. And the commonest reasons for that would be if a woman goes significantly past her due date or if there's other things, say, like high blood pressure and protein or preeclampsia uh, would be another common indication, particularly on a first time in birth. And the other common indication would be where the waters go, uh, but labour doesn't follow after about 24 hours. So the commonest uh, reason really would be where the woman goes significantly over, over her dates. And the different ways of inducing labour are either using a gel, which is a particular chemical that is um, made during the course of pregnancy and during labour, but we can give uh, the gel around the cervix to try and bring the labour on. And we'll do that if the cervix is what we call very unfavourable. Uh, what that means basically is that it's not showing any signs of going into labour. Uh, if the cervix is very, very favourable or if it looks as if the woman is sort of on the brink of going into labour, then we may um, prefer to give her, uh, well to break the waters first if the waters haven't gone already. And then uh, if that doesn't bring on labour then to give her oxytocin which is a drug given intravenously uh, to bring on labour and bring on contractions. An induction of labour is artificially bringing the pregnancy to an end by trying to get the woman into labour. Spontaneous labour is where the woman enters labour herself without any intervention from anybody at all. The next sort of intervention, I suppose, if it's a normal birth, and again, particularly on a first-time birth, would be the use of an episiotomy. An episiotomy is a cut at the entrance to the birth canal, at the entrance of the vagina, to enlarge it uh, to facilitate the birth of the baby. It's given with anaesthetic, obviously, and um, the commonest reason for giving it would be either that there's going to be a bad tear, which can be difficult to repair and can disrupt um, a woman's um, back passage, for example, if it's a bad tear, and that can be very distressing in the long term. So it's given if there's going to be a large tear or if, there's, if the, the perineum, that is the tissues at the entrance, are not stretching sufficiently to allow the birth without a small tear. It is almost always, but not inevitably, done if there's an assisted delivery, say with forceps or with the vacuum suction. The next, I suppose, major intervention would be if a woman requires assistance with birth, and that's either with the forceps or with a vacuum, which is attached to the vacuum cup, which is attached to the baby's scalp. And the woman continues to push, and the doctor pulls. So it's a combined effort. The ultimate intervention, I suppose, in, in childbirth would be cesarean section. And caesareans are either done before labour or during labour. Sections that are done before labour are usually uh, on a first time mother, might be because the baby is very premature and there's some serious complication like very high blood pressure, or if the baby is presenting by the breech bottom first um, at the end of pregnancy, or if the placenta is in the way. On a first time birth and during the course of labour, the commonest indication for caesarean delivery would be um, that the labour has stopped progressing and uh, that can be either because the cervix is just not opening up. That, of course, is much commoner when the labour is induced, uh, so when we've artificially started the labour. Um, on a spontaneous labour, failure to progress, as, it, as it's described, is much commoner in first-time births. So all of the problems are much commoner on a first-time birth. And the other common indication for a caesarean section during the course of labour would be if we feel that the baby is running into distress. So if a woman requests to have an elective caesarean section, we have to tease out whether it's a reasonable thing to do or whether it's the wrong thing to do. If it's just because she's got some sort of trivial reason, uh, well then it's the wrong thing to do because caesarean section is a major operation. It's surgery. It's associated with um, difficulties for the mother in terms of there's a higher rate of blood transfusion, there's a higher rate of wound infection, obviously. Uh, it'll affect her future reproduction. And Something that people may not be aware of, that the rate of unexplained um, death of a baby in the womb is double in a woman who's had a previous cesarean section. Now we don't know why that is, but that is actually a fact. The rate of stillbirth and unexplained death in the womb is very, very low, but it's double if a woman's had a previous cesarean section. So that's another reason not to. A caesarean section is where we make a cut in the tummy um, along usually what is described as the bikini line, so quite low down in the tummy. And uh, then we divide the tissues, the mother's tissues, separate the muscle and so on. And then we make an incision in the womb, in the uterus, and then we take the baby out. 
um, sometimes we need to use forceps to assist the delivery and um, then we'll show the baby to the mother and the father who's usually present because most cesareans are done now under spinal anaesthetic which is very similar to an epidural but it just works faster and it's more effective if you like quicker so the mother feels no pain she may feel pressure she may feel a bit of pulling and tugging in that but no pain at all and the vast majority of sections nowadays are done under spinal anaesthetic so the woman is awake and her, her partner or the father of the baby is there so we show the baby to the parents and then the baby will be given to a paediatrician who's usually in the operating theatre they bring the baby and kind of have a quick look at the baby, dry the baby off, um, weigh the baby, usually in front of the parents, um, and then wrap the baby up and give the baby to the father who's sitting at the head of the bed beside the mother. And there's a screen so that the mother and the father don't see what's going on because we don't want them fainting and getting frightened and so on. And then we will deliver the placenta and sew the, the uterus back up and then sew the abdomen and close the abdomen. And that's basically what a cesarean section is.